Fluoride has been long thought to be protective against dental cavities. But some people are concerned about fluoride in the water, especially those who drink lots of water as opposed to other beverages. They get more of it. Now there is a new study that shows that maternal urine fluoride levels have been correlated to increased risk of neurodevelopmental orders in their children. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Dr. David. Hope you're doing well as a functional medicine and a holistic medical provider. Some uh, Somebody who people often seek out because they're looking for more natural and safe approaches to their lifestyle and to diets and just they're living overall. Um, often are asking me about fluoride and a lot of people are trying to avoid it. Now, of course, as you can imagine, I'm often being asked what to do about this. Now, I first want to give a little background information. So um, it's fluoride is naturally found. You know, it's in nature. I believe it's the ninth most abundant um, element in the, in the Earth's crust. And there have been consensus studies over the years that shows that um, it reduces tooth decay by about 25%. And it does seem when fluoride is in the water to be especially more protective against ba for babies and young children who have yet to have their adult teeth to come out. Because when you can brush the adult teeth, obviously with fluoride, you can get some exposure there. But for teeth that are under the gums that are not out yet, there would be no brushing to expose it. So the only way that those those teeth would get exposed would be through oral consumption going through the whole body. Now, um, Harvard actually had done some, uh, uh, had released a paper a few years ago um, saying that, um, you know, because we are one of only 25 of the 175 countries in the world, um, 195 countries, excuse me, that do fluoridate our water. And what Harvard has pointed out and, and, and um, from one of their uh, public health papers is that, yes, we did see reduction in cavities here, but they also found that countries who did not fluoridate the water have been also seeing a lower amount of cavities as well. Maybe people are eating less sugar, brushing their teeth with fluoride toothpaste, or maybe none of the above, but they have been coming down even in non-fluoridated countries. Okay. Now, the Cochrane Review, which is, um, I've talked about it before. This is an organization that looks at many studies related to a particular topic and tries to make it into like a mega study where they take all these variables, they match things up in a way to give a much bigger study with many more subjects to give more power to the study. And what they found is that water fluoridation is effective in reducing um, dental decay among children, but they've also said that there's not any credible studies to show the effectiveness of water fluoridation for preventing cavities in adults. Um, not, not a single study met the criteria that said it was positive. Okay, so let's talk more about it. So what are some of the known issues about fluoride? One of them is called fluorosis, and this is very well known. If a person consumes too much fluoride long periods of time, it can cause um, staining of their teeth, um, and it can, um, and especially that's depending on how high of a dose that a person is taking of it. So, um, and this is true even for the internal ones as the teeth come out, they keep becoming brown. Now, what they have found is that in, is that if the amount of water, of fluoride in the water exceeds more than two milligrams per liter, that that was the risk factor for fluoridosis. And in 2010, as a response to this, the U.S. Um, Center for Disease Control um, determined that 41% um, of adolescents aged 12 to 15 back then had dental fluoridosis. So these were in people over, over a five-year period from 1999 to to 2004, 41% of adolescents had evidence of this fluoridosis, okay? So they did make some recommendation changes of having water be no more than um, 0.7 milligrams per liter as opposed to the two, which is where they found the risk to be at, the, rate, um, the risk to be at. Um, but of course, everybody can check their, their water supplies, especially if they're getting it from a municipality. They all have to report this, okay? Um, and so there also are some... Um, depending on the geographic location, because since it is naturally found in the earth and therefore potentially in feed, potentially in water itself, that the fluoride level can vary very dramatically from one community, one geographical location and another one. Um, the US EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, says that up to four um, milligrams per liter is allowed. So after that, it actually has to get completely kicked out. We said two was what causes the fluoridosis. We're talking a little bit of what higher doses may be doing. Um, now, 73% of the United States, of all the um, community water systems, is fluoridated. 
Okay, so most have it. Now, here in Hillsborough County, Florida, um, they do not allow more than 0.7 parts per million fluoride, and that's the equivalent of the 0.7 that is now being recommended for that. Um, so, and two liters of water, which most people aren't drinking, you know, two liters is about 67 ounces. So some people are drinking more, but that would give 1.4 milligrams per day um, total. And it's felt that that is the amount to prevent tooth decay. Um, and that's according to the Department of Health and Human Services. So we've now said that this is what may be protecting against dental, but what more than that? The question, of course, is fluoride safe? OK, and there have been a lot of studies, and I know that this is one of those things that people have claimed to be conspiracy theories and people they are putting fluoride in the water in order for mind control. And while I don't necessarily believe in that, the information, the research that's coming out is compelling that there may be a problem here. OK, so in 2019, Dr. Philippe Grandjean, and he was an adjunct professor um, in the, uh, of environmental health in the Harvard um, School of Public Health. And he had reviewed studies and, and, and the, the paper that he produced had looked at three recent um, prospective studies. That means you look, count, you see how much is in there and you look back. This isn't a going forward. That's a prospective study. This is a um, I'm sorry, prospective study. Excuse me. Um, um, it's, it's, sorry, I said the wrong retrospective is looking back. Prospective is looking forward. And they were looked at three different um, communities in Mexico and in China, these these three studies, with individual exposure data. Um, and they were looking for early life exposure in particular. And the reports supported the notion that elevated fluoride intake during early development, early fetal development, can result in IQ deficits that may be considerable. Okay. And then he then went on to say, let me make sure I got this right, neurotoxicity appears to be dose dependent. Calculations suggest that safe exposures are likely to be low current accepted and recommended fluoride concentrations in water. So again, there's, he's saying really dose dependent thing. And there was a lot of um, hubbub about this in, in five years ago, but there have been two studies from this year from reputable sources that I want to share with you now. So first of all, um, in, in 2024, multiple Canadian universities had um, done this study and, they were, and it was called prenatal fluoride exposure offspring visual acuity, and autonomic nervous system function in six-month-old infants, okay? And they found prenatal fluoride exposure was linked to poor visual acuity. Prenatal fluoride exposure was linked to lower heart rate variability. Now, of course, our heart rates are supposed to go up and down based upon stress, hunger, when we're sleeping, etc. And that is reflective of our autonomic nervous system. We're supposed to have variability, but they had the fluoride did not show that variability that we're naturally supposed to have. And of course, um, that can affect, you know, autonomic nervous system. That's that fight or flight um, reactive to, um, you know, particular situations, demands, stressors, etc. We're supposed to have that variability. And so the results suggested that the prenatal um, fluoride exposure may be associated with poor central and peripheral markers of nervous system function. Now, this month, May 2024, in the Journal of the American Association, JAMA, um, they, this was actually published from medical schools from Indiana University, University of Florida, and University of Southern California from their medical schools. They looked at 229 maternal um, child pairs. Okay. And they found that the higher maternal fluoride urine levels double the odds of having, of a child having neurodevelopmental be problems. And the authors actually went on to say there, there may need to be an established recommendations for limiting fluoride exposure during the prenatal period. You think? Anyway, so that's, what's coming out as of right now. So what do you do? Okay. Well, of course, you weigh the risks and the benefits of, of consuming fluoride. You know, it does protect the teeth, right? Um, at, at most community water on levels, it should not be causing the dental staining, right? Um, and but really more, a lot more research is going to be needed to figure out, is this really causing no developmental, behavioral, other nervous system problems? Um, you know, now in terms of, um, of, of having fluoride in the water, you know, one of the questions that has always been a guiding question for me has been, what does every other mammal do? And of course, mammals may be getting it from um, natural sources, but they're certainly not fluoridating their um, water. For that matter, they're not brushing their teeth with fluoride as well. But of course, I have to ask a side question. How many of us eat healthy like most mammals do? 
right? Are we consumption of juices and sugars and and uh, and ultra processed foods, which of course other mammals aren't doing that. So in order to fit into the what does every other mammal do, we, should we need to have a, a lifestyle and a diet that's similar to that in order to make that comparison? But it's a fair way of for me of running through my head because I do have patients, of course, who do live very natural, very healthy, all whole food, clean food types of diets, and they may certainly be at a lower risk of having a dental cavity. Now, um, as I said, most countries have decided that they don't want it in there. As I said, what's that? One in 95. So that's about um, only one in eight countries are actually fluoridating it now. Um, in some communities, though, especially the underserved communities where people may not get to the dentist as often, may not get the type of cleanings or the more aggressive care. You know, you should also acknowledge that in some underserved communities that the, the benefit may be outweighing the risk because, of course, dental health and losing teeth um, is a bad problem as well. But if you do, if you live in a, a water a fluoridated community, you can filter it. Reverse osmosis removes it completely. So yeah, and, and other and so of course you have to look into it to the system. But you can purchase um, water systems um, that will remove the fluoride completely, and then it's then again it would be a risk to you and your family. Okay, if you do that, you may also want to have a system that remineralizes with a little bit of the calcium and potassium back into it. But uh, because all the minerals end up getting knocked out from that. Now, of course, if you are using fluoride toothpaste, um, of course, make sure it's being spit out. That's our concern in babies. That's why they say don't use more than a small pea size worth. If you're using fluoride toothpaste on a toothbrush, of course, with infants, we don't have to use toothpaste. We can use just water. And, of course, there is non-fluoridated water as well. OK, so I mean, I'm a non fluoridated toothpaste as well. So you now you have some information, you know, um, and the, but the fact that there are major studies that are now coming out. And again, these are relatively small studies, 229 people. That's not a huge study, but it is in JAMA. And I take that, you know, I do weight that more because of the uh, of um, of who JAMA is, the American Medical Association, knowing that there are a lot more um often pro things like fluoride. So the fact that the AMA is having this kind of thing published, it, it grabbed my attention some, and in part led me to want to make this, uh, um, um, make this video and share it with you. So, you know, hopefully you learned something. Please share it with other people. If you like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, become a member on Patreon, where you can have access to all of my holistic um, primary care protocols and um, lots of other videos that we put in our education library. So uh, hope you have a great day. Thank you.